On the 25th day of October, Halloween gave to me 25 Isabel's Freaking, 24 Vincent's Farming, 23 Cushing's Ghouling, 22 Rutgers Glaring, 21 Babies Killing, 20 Horsehead Snorting, 19 D's Renting, 18 Frank's Perving, 17 Angels Stripping, 16 Demons Jazzercising, 15 Runes on Parchment, 14 Joseph's Whispering, 13 Seniors Bleeding, 12 Creepy Masks, 11 Dancing Demons, 10 Catholic Monsters, 9 Priests of Miracling, 8 Jerry's Vamping, 7 Jody's Winking, 6 Body Swapping, 5 Reeds of Wolfing, 4 Drunken Uncles, 3 Werewolf Colonies, 2 Spooky Sisters, and a Psycho Who Killed Janet Lee. Well, hey there, everyone, and welcome to the 25th of 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, as I have said in the previous installments, past couple of days, these are movies uh, in this final stretch that we are discussing that are kind of hard to ignore classics that we didn't cover last year. That's one of our rules of the 31 Days of Halloween is that we don't repeat ourselves. And this falls distinctly into the category of Things I should have seen and didn't. And of course, I'm talking about the film Possession from 1981. It is a movie I heard a ton about for a very long time. And I would imagine you have too. If you haven't seen it, and you may not have because it was unusually hard to find uh, to get a look at. Um, but if you haven't seen it, it's a movie that is often sort of harkened back to when people talk about art house horror as being one of the first great examples or certainly in the same realm as something like repulsion from roman polanski and so to give you the quick bona fides possession is uh directed by a guy named andre zulaski and uh he's a polish director directed 16 17 movies or so you know kind of writes and directs his own stuff again very auteur kind of director and uh it, it stars Sam Neill, who you may recall from Jurassic Park and uh, a, a terrific Twitter account in which he highlights the animals on his farm. So that's good. And uh, the other star, it, and really the big star of the film, is Isabella Gianni, who is a, I believe, French actress, uh, although she speaks German as well. Um, but beautiful, beautiful actress uh, was in... Uh, this, she was in Ishtar, strangely, uh, if you remember that movie, the famous dud of a film, she was speaking Polanski, she was in The Tenant, she played Mina in Werner Herzog's Nosferatu, uh, yeah, so she's been around, and a number of other, uh, films as well, um, Claudio Claudel, she played the title char character in that, and, uh, sort of known uh, at the time for being this almost ethereally beautiful uh, actress and the movie is certainly art house and as I said I hadn't seen it before when I was coming to this movie I didn't know exactly what to expect other than it was a little bit different and that uh, it was highly regarded it was considered a, a, a terrific horror film uh, although hard to define as a horror film in some ways. And I would agree with that. Uh, and I'd al always heard about the uh, train sequence, the train station sequence, uh, or train tunnel sequence in uh, Possession, in which Isabel Ajani uh, stages a, an incredible freakout. So going into it with that limited information, I wasn't really sure what to expect. And the story is the story of a divorce. Sam Neill plays a a spy in uh, West Germany. Uh, that is the implication. Again, everything I say about this movie, put an asterisk beside it, and uh, that asterisk will lead you to this statement. A lot of this movie I don't totally understand. <laughs> this movie is super weird, and it doesn't go out of its way to explain itself, which is good, but also it leads to me making some assumptions, which may or may not be true. And so uh, Sam Neill is playing a spy, but he is sort of retiring from his job 
because his marriage is falling apart. And he goes home, and uh, Isabella Gianni and, and his son Bob, um, she is, you know, telling him, like, hey, I don't, I, I think that things have changed in our relationship. I want a divorce. Um, he makes some attempts to woo her back. Um, they, they try to have sex and that doesn't quite do it. And then it comes to light that she's been seeing another man and has been for some time. And then the weirdness begins. I mean, it was a little weird before that, but then everybody starts speaking in these histrionic ways. Like there isn't a scene where Sam Neill and Isabella Johnny aren't just screaming at one another for a, a significant portion of the film. And she ends up moving out. He assumes that it's with this guy, Heinrich, that she's been seeing. And Heinrich, by the way, one of the great characters in film history, who is just this glorious European weirdo, uh, who's into sort of Zen philosophy and loves everyone and everything and may or may not have come on to Sam Neill. But certainly, like, he's the kind of guy that probably would be cool with a three-way. Uh, so a lot of interesting dynamics at work with Heinrich. And so Sam Neill has a few days where he just drinks and screams uh, to get over this relationship. And then goes home to find that Isabella Gianni has disappeared, leaving their son Bob alone. So he decides, well, I'm going to stay at, at this apartment, take care of my son and try to figure out what the hell is going on with my wife. And so in one of the best scenes of the movie, he tracks down this guy Heinrich and meets up with him at Heinrich's house, where uh, Heinrich, like I said, almost comes on to him, but is also just discussing like how transcendent their sex was with uh, his sex with Isabella Gianni. But also lets it drop that, hey, she isn't staying here. Which furthers the mystery of, well, if she's not at home and she's not staying with Heinrich, where the hell is she going? And so Sam Neill uh, works to track her down, talks to her friend Margit, who is, uh, you know, a real pill. Uh, she He does not care for Margie even a little bit. Uh, although they at one point they sleep in the same bed, and it, that's very strange. At any rate, th there's a lot of this movie that's just like, I'm not sure I understand why these characters are behaving this way, other than this is sort of what the movie... Like, it, it's a very surreal, dream logic kind of film in a lot of ways. So, what we learn, ultimately, is that Isabella Gianni is keeping this apartment near the Berlin Wall. And I'm sure there's political subtext to that that I don't get. Uh, other than, you know, this movie is a lot of uh, 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 a lot of themes about decay. Whether that's political decay or the decay of a relationship or, you know, that kind of thing. That I got. What, the political stuff, maybe not so much. I You know, I was alive in the 80s, but just barely. Um, so, in this apartment, though, it turns out that Isabella Gianni is keeping some sort of tentacle monster that she might be feeding it uh, people that come to the apartment, but I'm not sure if that's the case or if she's just caring for it. Um, certainly fucking it. That's a, a that's clear at a one point. Um, so I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, people show up at, at this apartment. She ends up killing them. Uh, whether it's the detective hired to follow her or an, another guy. Uh, Heinrich almost gets it there, but instead Sam Neill kills him and stages it to look like either a suicide by toilet or a, a murder that uh, he, he can get out of, or an accidental death. And that which leads to an, a really strange conversation where Sam Neill talks to Heinrich's mother about how uh, she found his body but can't find his soul. And again, probably a, a very important part of the subtext. I don't entirely understand it, but there you have it. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's a really strange movie, if I haven't said that already. And, and, and so, uh, through the course of the film, um, Sam Neill discovers this tentacle monster. He's horrified by it. Um, but is willing to sort of like run away with Isabella Gianni 
and like let's get away from all of this stuff uh but they can't because she is when he goes to find her again she's fucking the tentacle monster and looks at him and says almost almost and so he freaks out uh ends up staging uh, an accident which leads to him getting shot and also during the course of the film he meets Bob's school teacher who is a doppelganger of Isabella Gianni only she doesn't constantly scream and as far as we know is not fucking tentacle monsters so uh did I say this movie is a little weird it's a little weird um and yeah and so the end of the movie is you know spoilers if you want to see possession if you haven't seen it, I, I recommend it for sure it's it, it's unlike anything you're you're ever going to see but the end of the film is that she ends up creating Isabella Gianni uh sort of this doppelganger or or at least the doppel the the tentacle monster evolves into a doppelganger of Sam Neill and she is going to stay with that but she ends up getting shot by some police who are hunting Sam Neill but the doppelganger is unharmed and the end of the film is the doppelganger who seems to have this strange uh, power over people like they, there's something monstrous about him for sure and he gets away goes to the Isabella Johnny doppelganger who's the school teacher who's been taking care of Bob while Sam Neill's been doing all kinds of weird shit like killing people in toilets and then <laughs> he ends up uh like being at the door while you hear explosions and stuff and the kid tells the uh you know the the teacher the Isabella Johnny doppelganger don't open don't open don't open it's really unsettling that last scene is really creepy and and really gets under your skin and uh possession as a whole though that's kind of the story but possession is really i, I when i found out that the director was having a divorce at the time that he wrote and directed or it was on the heels of a divorce that he, he wrote and directed possession and that makes perfect sense this is a movie about a guy wrestling with the fact that his relationship is ending and trying to figure out why and this movie is sort of that idea through the prism of the woman being monstrous and erratic and i you know, I think you can make the argument that it is perhaps somewhat a misogynist film um, because it, it, but also the view of women, and I don't know that the view of men is any better, but the view of women is that Isabella Gianni, uh for wanting this divorce and having this affair is a total monster. And throughout the film, like she wears the same dress a bunch and it just gets dirtier and dirtier and she becomes m more and more crazed. And as I said, there's a, a scene where she just has a, a incredible freak out in this subway tunnel. And which culminates with her having a miscarriage of faith, I think is what she says. That she has two children, uh, Faith and Hope, and Faith is the one that she miscarried. And again, super weird artsy stuff, but uh, really effective. Like That's the thing about watching this movie. I'll get back to that what I think is happening but uh, one of the things that's a joy in watching this movie is you have no idea what the hell is going to happen next because left turns abound in this movie uh, and that that makes it really exciting to watch because uh, because you're kind of in this dream world where logic doesn't entirely dictate the events of the film kind of anything can happen and you know within the bounds of reason like nobody flies or anything but tentacle mo monsters turn into husbands and, you know, let, let that be your guide. So there, there's the idea of the woman as monster, but also there's the doppelganger that Isabella Gianni has, the, the school teacher, who is this, like, innocent and beautiful woman who doesn't argue with Sam Neill and just wants to help take care of the kid and that kind of thing. And it's this very, uh, you know, stereotypical sort of housewife kind of character and interestingly though sam neill who is constantly yelling in this movie which is a, a gear that i did not know sam neill had but because they're constantly screaming at e each other in the midst of these arguments it's fun to see him in in that kind of crazed way 
but you know he goes from this guy who's kind of a monster himself and having his wife followed and murdering uh to i guess help you know hide her crimes but also he becomes a doppelganger that's even more monstrous one presumes because as soon as the kid gets a whiff of this dude being at the door um the kid freaks out and goes upstairs to a bathroom where he lays face down in the water so yeah i don't know that i entirely understand possession but i couldn't look away from it while i was watching it and there are some scenes in it that are really disturbing not just the fucking the tentacle monster although that is maybe the one thing that when I think about this film, I will think about that and Isabella Johnny freaking out in the subway tunnel. But there's a lot of stuff, like like I said, that ending shot of Sam Neill pressed against a glass door trying to get in as the sounds of, of bombs go off. That is really disturbing. Some of the arguments, too. Like, it reminded me a bit of Hereditary and the Tony Collette dinner scene where she just gets raw with her son and husband. It's not quite that direct and honest and realistic like it is in hereditary and let me or well it could be as honest it's just not as realistic because when they're having these conversations they're having these like hyper esoteric discussions of relationships and when do things in relationships change and like i said it's very clearly the director working through a divorce but working through a divorce in through his subconscious and it's incredibly striking um if you haven't seen it here's the other trouble that i had is that trying to find this movie uh i think it's out of print on blu-ray right now so the only blu-ray copy i could find was 185 dollars i think um it's not on any of the major streaming services i found it on a service called metrograph which apparently is this very niche sort of art house streaming service that allows you to see some in theater screenings at home and also streams a handful of movies and by handful i mean like six or seven and this happened to be one of them and it's only streaming through october 31st so if you want to see possession you plunk down five dollars for this metrograph app uh before halloween and you can see it but uh it's it's difficult to get your hands on at this point yeah, it, it's a very interesting movie. It it certainly lived up to what I had heard about it. And because I didn't know much more than what I said up front, that it was just sort of an art house horror movie, and that Isabella Johnny freaks out in the middle of it, I had no idea that there was a tentacle monster. Now you know more than I do. It, it was really something. And uh, it made me question whether or not the other movies I've watched for this 31 days are movies at all because this one takes things to a different level in some ways uh, yeah if you've never seen Possession I can't recommend it enough because you're never going to see anything like it and even if you have a negative reaction to it which is totally a reasonable reaction to this movie like a lot of art house movies right that you can just be like I don't th this vibe is not what I'm in for like this director is, is presenting something on screen that just makes me hate it and that's a completely reasonable reaction to this movie but I think I kind of love it and I wish that it were more available so I could get a blu-ray that had like some great you know critical commentaries on it and some making ofs and stuff like that just an FYI the the tentacle monster that Isabella Johnny has sex with by the way, uh, designed by Carlo Rambaldi, who uh, we last saw uh, on this list of 31 Days of Halloween as designing the werewolf from Silver Bullet. So that ain't nothing. Anyway, it's a crazy movie. If you can get your hands on it, please do. And also, please l drop me a line and tell me what you made of it, because I'm still wrestling with it. But uh, Possession is... is unlike anything else that we're going to talk about on this list certainly moving forward the rest of it's going to be way more mainstream than something like, like possession uh if you want to drop me a line you can do so on facebook or whatever they decide to call it now uh, <laughs> at uh legion podcast you can also find me uh in the group the dark parade 
You can also uh, find me on Twitter at Legion Podcasts or Dark Parade Pod. Either one of those will work. And uh, yeah, uh, Instagram also, Legion Podcast. So feel free to drop a line at any of those places to let me know what you thought about Possession. Or if you have questions, if something I said doesn't make any sense and you're like, wait a second, I need some, <laughs> I need some clarification about a crazy thing you said about the movie Possession, feel free. Uh, that is uh, also a completely reasonable reaction to the things said in this particular uh, retrospective of Possession. At any rate, that's going to do it uh, for today. It is uh, a Monday morning. Uh, I hope that you have a wonderful week. This is the last full week of our Halloween celebration. Um, do good work out there. Be spooky, especially. And come back tomorrow for yet another uh, film in our 31 Days of Halloween. Probably less tentacle monsters in that one. See you then.